Okay, guys, we are at um, the largest smorgasbord in America, Shady Maples. This place is amazing. You're going to want to watch this video to the end. Uh, we drove around there, uh, the parking lot, so you could see it. It has other facilities here where they have a, a farmer's market and a grocery store. We went in and ate, and it's the largest buffet or smorgasbord is what they call it here in Pennsylvania that I've ever seen. What do you think about it, Jody? It was too much food, I'm telling you. You can go from one end to the other and get so full, I'm telling you. <laughs> one of the amazing things is it's, it can seat 2,200 people. It serves six to 7,000 people a day uh, through the week and seven to 8,000 on the weekend. It's amazing. It's got a 44,000 square foot gift shop downstairs. We're gonna take you downstairs and show you the gift shop, shop, but I know there's gonna always be people say, oh, you went too fast, I couldn't see that. There's no way we can slow down. We're gonna walk through it very fast or this video would be five hours long if we went down every aisle in the gift shop. They have toys and different things that I used to, reminds me of when I was a kid, we had a, a toy shop and it was just amazing in our little town and there's just toys in there of all kinds and we're gonna go in so you're gonna to wanna to watch this to the end and we're gonna tell you where this is located at at the very end. So let's go. This facility reminds me of a huge hotel or a uh, maybe a, a huge casino of some sort. It's Mennonite owned. It started out as a little roadside stand and you're gonna get to talk to Rebecca in customer service here in just a minute. And she tells us a little bit about the history of Shady Maples. Beautiful place. Let's go inside. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. So, can you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, Shady Maples? Sure thing. Well, what do you want to know? Well, um, how many people do you normally serve on a day? On a daily basis, I would say Monday through Friday, we serve between five and 6,000 people a day, um, just depending on weather. Uh, January, February usually are slow months, but the rest of the year is pretty busy. Um, and then on Saturdays, we usually serve between seven and 8,000 people. So it gets pretty busy in here on Saturdays. Um, and then depending if we have coupons running, it can be more people or less people. It just sort of depends. So on uh, how long has the restaurant been here and how did it start? So it has been 38 years. This will be our 38th year anniversary here in 2023. Um, it started as a young Mennonite couple who started a roadside stand, just fruits and vegetables. And then it grew into a little grocery store. They started to get more merchandise. And from there, um, Marvin uh, Weaver, who sort of started it, uh, wanted to do a restaurant as well. And he started what was sort of just like a snack shack and then grew into a buffet. Um, and then it grew, it just kept growing and growing and growing until we now have the huge grocery store down there. And we used to be located down in the Gish's Furniture Building just over there um, until 2001 is when we built this building. Um, we uh, have built the gift shop from that. We have another gift shop extension down the, uh, in the grocery store. And then we also have the RV shop that started a couple years after this was built. So um, yeah, it just started out as a young couple who wanted to build a business and it just kept growing and growing and growing until we have this huge building it's smorgasbord <laughs> how, how many people can y'all see here so on this side here um our main buffet side we can seat uh 1200 and the banquet side over here which where we do we do our christmas banquets over here we do large conferences that sort of thing down this hallway um that side can seat the remaining so altogether this whole building can uh, seat 2200 2200 so i didn't even go down that way yeah, that's absolutely. crazy feel free to walk down there look around i think there is a banquet happening over there until three i believe today but you're welcome to go take a look um see just what's over there there's another uh, restroom down there there's a whole other lobby down there that's also our overflow seating for Saturdays um, so if we get large bus groups in here it's a great place they have great big tables in there that we can just put overflow people in so this this is kind of a, an overview of the the whole property mm -hmm. so there's multiple buildings here yeah so this building here this is the smorgasbord this is where we're at um, and then down here this will be the farm market this one here and then up over here in the corner you can barely see that would be the RV shop here um, this is just storage and warehouse out here. And then this building here will be Good Store, which is not associated with us. They're just on our complex. Okay. So the uh, do you know much about the artwork, the three-dimensional artwork? I know a little bit about it. Um, I know that it's done by Abner and I think it's Amos Zook is their names. Um, how many pieces do we have in here? 
think I saw something yeah. that said 25. Yeah, upwards. I think it's upwards of 25 at this point. We we just our newest one is that second one on this wall right down here. Um, fun fact that I know about it is that in you looking at them, most of the time you can see two little Amish boys in all the paintings to represent um, Amos and Abner Zook. Uh, oh. That's a fun fact I learned recently. But uh, besides that, I don't know much, the whole lot about it. There's a informational thing over there on that one, but that's about most I know about those. <laughs> well, thank you for your time, you are and welcome. we're going to walk around and film just a little bit. Absolutely, go for it. Thank you, sweetheart. You are welcome. So Re Rebecca said that they can see 2,200 people total. And right here is another piece of the artwork. And she said there's always two little boys, Amish boys, that represent the two brothers that made these and all the pieces of artwork. Really? She said she just recently learned that. So this is three dimensional. It's just really amazing. You really can't see it on camera like you could in person. Let me see if I can get a side view of it here. This is three dimensional artwork. And this is one of the smaller pieces. We're gonna go look at some of the bigger pieces in just a second. So I can't imagine how many hours of work it took. Here's the two Amish boys in this one. So now we've got something to look for. Here's some information about how they started out. Lancaster New Era Business. Wow, amazing place. I didn't even see this part. They've got an elevator that goes to the gift shop and you're gonna to wanna to see the gift shop, believe me. We're gonna go down to the gift shop here in just a minute. So on this one, I don't see the two boys, but they're probably in there. Just a beautiful restaurant. It looks like a... Um, look at this clock. Here's another one. Wait till you all see the big pieces. These are wall hangings. There's some over a couple that takes up the whole floor space. So here's another one of the banquet rooms. And they have very nice clean bathrooms. Yes, they have. Very one. clean bathrooms. <laughs> so wow, this is a church. And we... So this is three-dimensional art that's just absolutely amazing. We can, uh, there's 25 pieces like this here. This is the larger pieces and this is all hand carved out of wood. And we could do a whole video just on this artwork that's just so amazing. It shows kind of the history of the people that settled here in Pennsylvania. Abner K. Zook born in 1921 into an older order Amish family. Old order Amish family in Lancaster County. And I think he passed away a few years ago, maybe in 2014, which I'm sure you can look that up on Google. And there's another huge piece around here. There's 25 pieces like that. We're not gonna be able to get all the pieces in there because the video would be way too long we can find just must have took several years to make a piece like this I'm gonna think uh, the work that goes into it we've got the stagecoach Lancaster um, and I'm saying that long, wrong I call it Lancaster but that's not how it's pronounced but uh, overland stage coach and here's people traveling backwards and forth to Philadelphia in the 1700s probably uh, they have a coat room. The bathrooms are absolutely amazing. We're not going to go in there. But these pieces are of such great detail. 
very delicate. I'm really surprised that they, they have them out that you could actually, someone could actually touch this piece of artwork. If it was mine, there's no way I would let people get that close to it. But uh, as you can see here, it goes down all the way through that end and I'm gonna go in and show you that footage right now. This is some of the, more of the artwork that's just absolutely amazing. It's hand carved wood. These are ballrooms, ballroom A, B, and C. This building was built about 18 years ago from what one of the employees told me. They keep it in great shape. And throughout the restaurant, you find this three-dimensional artwork right here. This is some of the smaller pieces. I can't imagine how many hours it took for him to carve these pieces. This is one of the condiment areas, butter and sauces and syrups and mustards and barbecue sauce. Oh, there's a big, the biggest jug of A1 I've ever seen in my life. So on busier days, they have different bars open or different sections. I'm gonna kind of give you a sweep down look right here, all the way from that end, and not all the bars are open down there because it's not a busy day. All the way down through here. See they have a huge kitchen area where they bake and cook. The employees here are not allowed to receive tips from what we are finding out on the paper they gave us. To, they said not to leave any tips. This is the dessert bar. And they have several different sections you can get drinks and they have a wide variety of different drinks here. Stuff I've never even seen. You can even get cappuccinos. So this is the seating area, or one of it, and this is where they've got a lot of people that's sitting in the tables. And we're in one of the booth sections and they can open that section back up to make it larger in the back, back there. But I'm a fat man and I like to eat, and they have the food here. I'm going to show you some more of the drink section that's uh, really interesting of all the different things you can get here. Icy's milk. I think I'll get me some milk in a minute with some dessert. Sunkissed 100% orange juice. Enhanced water. Pepsi machine, coffee.
They have different sections they can open up as they need the room. As it starts filling up, they open up different sections, looks like. These are overflow rooms that they have. This is more like a big convention center, I'm gonna think, that I would call it, instead of a smorgasbord. We were doing another film, and we asked the lady, uh, where can we eat at? And she said, uh, go to Shady Maples. So we Googled it, and we had no clue that when we got here, this is gonna be the largest smorgasbord, or in Tennessee, we kinda call it a buffet, a little bit different maybe, but the largest smorgasbord in America. And they have a video right here that shows a little bit about the property that you can watch when you're here. See, let's look on this area over here. Here's a whole nother section. And there's multiple ways to get down to the gift shop. And I don't know if I said that, but oh my goodness, I didn't know it went all the way down through here. So, wow, <laughs> this is crazy. I've never seen nothing like it. Here's a whole nother entrance on this side. And here is some more of the Zook artwork, three-dimensional artwork. Just absolutely beautiful. I don't know, they have to be worth quite a bit of money. He's no longer alive and to find somebody that can do this nowadays would be about impossible. Nobody wants to put that much detail into this artwork. We could make a whole video about the man that did this. That would be amazing. So it keeps going on down that way. So it is just room after room. Here's another video up here playing. And so we're gonna go down to the gift shop, but we're gonna go down the main entrance. There's entrances on both sides, it looks like, then there's a main entrance. It's got a lot of history. Oh, wow. That is crazy. The cuckoo clock history. In 1974, clock is made in Freiburg, Germany, Black Forest by the Snyder Clock Company. It was shipped to Mr. John Hall of Hall's Motor Freight Company in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania for the price of $10,600 plus freight. In 1980, the clock was re relocated to the Snow Peak Mountain Ski Resort near Thompson Town, Pennsylvania. In 1986, the clock was relocated to the Blue Marsh Ski Area, Burnville, Pennsylvania. 2005, the clock was moved to the Magic Mountain Ski Lodge in Vermont. 2007, the clock has moved back to an office in Burnville, Pennsylvania. And in 2013, the clock is bought at an auction by Marvin Weaver and displayed in the Shady Maple Smorgasbord. So they didn't tell us what it sold for at auction, but I'm sure it was more than the original selling price of $10,000. We can go down this way to the gift shop, but we're gonna go back to the main stairways and go down. They have steps going down, but you can drive up to the lower level or they have an elevator if you can't use the steps. huge. See, we're up on the steps and you kind of can get a little bit of view of it here. So we're going to start at the right hand side and we're just going to walk down these aisles really quick and I know that you're going to be mad because we didn't go down each aisle but there's no way we can go down each aisle or this video would be three or four hours long to look at everything because there's anything and everything that you could think of in this gift shop. Here is Christmas items. This is my department right here. They got some signs I've never seen. These are reproduction signs and I collect reproduction signs and have over the years. Um, but they've got signs here I've never really seen in the reproduction market. So this is kind of my favorite section and then the toy section that we're getting ready to go to. They actually have the Tonkas here so I'm gonna cut down one of these aisles right here. And uh, 
Looks like we've got some gnomes and pitchers. T-shirt section over to the right. This is the customer service downstairs for the gift department. Cups and keychains. One ho the, the section just for the cups and keychains is larger than most gift stores that I go into. Um, they have a checkout area over here. So I know I'm moving fast, but I've got to. I've got to walk fast. And I will let you know this is in Pennsylvania right now. And I'll tell you the exact town when we get to the end of the video. But all you have to do is also Google Shady Maples Smorgasbord. And they have a Facebook page and a website. I'm not for sure what's in that section with these lights. I looked earlier that I didn't, must, might be an employee break room. We start getting into the toy section right here and just the toys alone would fill a large store. It must be at least 15,000 square feet of toys. Puzzles. Well, The Game of Baloney. That's a new one for me. Never seen that. I do think this is 44,000 square foot, someone said, but I kind of think it feels bigger than that to me just to the fact that we walked through it earlier before we ate. I have them laying out and I have them on my nose. That's two pairs. I was going to bring them today. I thought, no, I'll get them to you down there. They won't see me give them to Yeah, I know. So I'll come out with her magic. Artwork section. A lot of the paintings I see here for sale are the barns and the Amish doll houses that you see in the area. Although that one wouldn't be an Amish barn with the Harley Davidson. I'm thinking that's a Harley Davidson. I'm not an expert, but you can tell me in the comments. It could be an Indian. Uh, the artwork then transforms into a whole section of furniture and I'm going to believe and think that this is either Mennonite made or Amish made pieces since we're in Amish country here. I have a piece right down here that I really really like. I'm going to go left a little bit so you can see a little bit in there. Um, dog bowl, dog food section. Look at this piece, Jody. This was one of my favorite ones I saw. I love here. these dog bowl things. Check this out, Jody. This has got a, a pull out right here. So I'm not for sure if it's for a desk or a TV. It has some hooks up here, so cups here probably. Maybe a microwave stand. We're it looking is a at. coffee bar. A coffee bar. Okay. I like it. Oop, I see a bunch of stuff down through there. We're kind of making a, the outer loop of the, the gift shop area. We're walking on the outer side of it. There's too much to look at. 
so much. You could spend. Hello. Beautiful quilts, wind chimes. So we have a floral section right here. Another place to check out. I'm sure they have workers here when it's busy. A lot of wind chimes. Those look like they're made out of gourds, gourd birdhouses that's been glazed. We're gonna go over here and look at the toy section. If I can find it again, <laughs> could get lost in this place. Here's some uh, stuffed animals. And then I liked all of these little animals here. As a guy, these were interesting to me. And they have some bigger, dinosaurs right here. I thought those was neat as a kid. I would have loved those. We really didn't have dinosaurs when I was a kid. Here's some wooden toys. Rocks. Some girl toys. Oh, down here is where I saw some Tonkas. They have some of the very few last metal Partially metal Tonkas. They're not as much metal as they used to be back in the day when I was a kid. But they have some Tonkas there. And we're going to get ready to go outside and close this video out. Let you see the outside one more time. But uh, yeah, there's a, a whole other uh, building that, with the grocery store and farmer's market. That uh, we'll drive by that at the end of the video. Just on the outside of it. We're not going to go on the inside. So make sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about uh, the world's largest smorgasbord. So we're getting ready to go back up these very nice elegant stairs and go outside and close this video out. There's a catering trailer so apparently they do catering this is uh, one of the entrances this is more of the banquet side I believe they said that I walked down So they have loading docks right here, looks like. Uh, they bring in food by the tractor trailer loads, massive air conditions, a break room, more loading docks on this side. This is the lower level that we're seeing here, the gift shop. Looks like they got a pharmacy here. I think they said that the buffet originally might have started in this building. One of the things that you see here in 
Lancaster is places for the Amish to tie up their horses. We don't see that very often anymore, but we have seen it at most of the businesses we've been to, especially if they do farm type stuff. I noticed this as we was Pew. driving by. So they have covered areas for their horse and buggies where they can come and eat or buy groceries. And if it's raining, I guess they pull in there. Parking lot is massive. I don't know how many cars it can park, but uh, if they get 2,200 uh, guests here, there's gonna be at least parking for a thousand cars or more. The sun's kind of got it blocked where we can't see um, real good, but we're gonna get a little bit different angle out of the sun maybe here now. There we go. Are these RVs for sale? Yeah, they have an RV uh, center down there. Oh, really? They do. You can take a ride right here and go to it, I think. 